So this is the stuff that makes the magic of fresco happen. Lime, which is made from burning limestone, and that could be a range of kinds of stones. And this is in fact what happened to a lot of ancient Rome. Uh, there were lime kilns all over the city in the early Middle Ages, um, and the Colosseum and many other buildings and sculptures were reduced to lime by burning in kilns. That lime powder is then mixed with water. It causes a very violent uh, chemical reaction that can get up to temperatures like 600 degrees. And, and, and after it then um, settles down, it, it forms this kind of putty, which is only better uh, over time. It gets better, I mean, at minimum, you could work with this stuff after about three months. But most of the great writers about fresco from ancient Roman writer Vitruvius to uh, Alberti and Vasari and others, talk about aging lime for at least a year, two years. Um, uh, high quality lime that you can buy in Italy now is aged typically two years. Uh, it only gets better over time and it can last even, even longer than that. So the lime is what makes the magic happen because it's essentially the, the binder. It what bind, it's, what can, it's what's going to bind the plaster with its aggregate, um, in this case sand, um, which is the most common and simplest, but uh, there are other possible aggregates. You can add in or use instead marble dust. Um, you can also use pozzolana, which is a volcanic ash, which Michelangelo used on the Sistine ceiling. And, and the lime and sand mixed together form a matrix that, that can be used as a, as a mortar, and it's what traditional lime uh, mortar is made of, and also this kind of plaster. The finished coat of plaster that I'm gonna be painting on, known as the intonigo, is typically of a ratio of about one part aggregate and one part lime. Uh, if you go too much with the lime, you'll develop cracking because the lime shrinks as it dries. So to err on the side of caution, you might use a little more aggregate, let's say sand, than lime slightly just to be on the safe side. But the more lime, the better it is to paint. So this is one of those judicious balance things that, uh, that required a lot of experience on the part of the artist and his, and his plasterer. The job then is to mix this stuff together like dough or making pasta um, with, with no um, lumps or, or, or kind of clumps of, of line because that will be a place where you will get cracking happen. So I'm going to mix this up thoroughly. This is my setup for the day's painting. I'm gonna be painting on a roof tile, known as a tegula or flat tile. Um, and I've already put a coat of plaster down. I did the Sinopia, uh, as, as you will have hopefully seen, and the Sinopia is painted on the uh, second to last coat of plaster known as the Riccio. So this is very much like traditional three coat plaster that was practiced in the United States more or less consistently until at least maybe the 60s, 70s with the arrival of Jipboard. Uh, my uncles who were home builders were some of the last people in Allentown, Pennsylvania to use three coat plaster on their houses into the 1980s. What I did is to try to imitate this figure of Heraclitus from the School of Athens at the foot of the steps um, is, is try to, I'm going to essentially follow Raphael's Giornate. Giornate are day's work or a day's painting in this particular case. The plaster that I'm going to be using will, um, again, work for about mm, 8 to 12 hours, depending on how humid the day is and how cool or hot. And, and uh, that, that time within which you can work is the time when the uh, lime will bind the pigments that you brush onto the plaster with just water. So there's no binder, there's no oil like there is in oil paint. The binder is actually the lime in the plaster and that's the magic of fresco in a way is that you're not really painting with a medium. In a way, the medium is the plaster and the pigments get bonded into the matrix of the surface of the plaster and become integral with it. So I'm going to imitate the giornate or the day's work because what Raphael had to do was essentially uh, organize his painting into a series of giornate or day's work. And essentially it becomes a kind of jigsaw puzzle of these various days plastering and then painting what he thinks he can do in about 8 to 10 or 12 hours. And so this figure of Heraclitus is below the steps. You can see a little bit of the steps. I plastered that a previous day and painted it. And so now I'm going to be filling in his head, uh, his collar, his hand, um, and, and a part of his breast, but then his, his arm essentially, and a little gap between his proper left arm and his right proper right hand is the block that he's resting on. I'm going to do that uh, actually uh, um, as a second giornata or leave that unpainted so you can see what the giornate steps look like. 
putting one coat of plaster down. I'm gonna let that dry. And this is what I learned from Leonetto Centauri with whom I studied fresco. I'm pushing this one sort of more into the surface. It's gonna bond better to the Ariccio. And then I will put a finish layer on top of this. That will be the layer that I will paint into. But you'll notice that what's happening is the Sinopia disappears and it disappears forever until somebody, as people have done in the 20th century, pull the frescoes off the wall and reveal the Sinopias. And those have been a, a major revelation in the last century or so in restoration, seeing Sinopias that have been covered up for hundreds of years.